the weight of the world on our shoulders back then, didn't we? <laughs> Could have been worse. Can you remember what it was like here 50 years ago? I mean, we can find to herself for just giving pussy looks to one another in the street. Yeah, you're right. Just look at that tie. Oh, here we go again. There we go. Ready for the day. Are you sure you don't want me to come with you? I'll be fine. Besides, I think it's best I go it alone. I'm sure you can be unpredictable at the best of times. As long as you're sure? I'm sure. Keep wrapped up. It's chilly out there. Have you now? Fine. Good. See you later, my sweet. Wish me luck. Ethel and her chum, the genius. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Joe. It's good to see you. We've missed you. Yes. Yes, we have. Ethel, I've missed you too. took the liberty of ordering two pots of tea. I know you like a brew in here, Ethel. Thank you. I think I should mention we can't stay long. I've got some items to pick up and Johnny has offered to drive me to collect them. I see. We don't have to rush off, Mum. We can have some time here first. It's not like this is a regular thing. You haven't seen each other in months. Yes, but you know how long I've been waiting for those items to be delivered. What are you getting? It's some materials for my knitting club. I decided to try some new colours and I've ordered from a company I'm not sure about. Oh well, uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. We finally finished that new hallway. You remember? The light green. I bet it looks lovely, Uncle Joe. And how's Uncle Tom? Is he well? Oh, he's fine. He's fine. He sends his love as always. He's always asking me how you're getting on at university. Well, we both do wonder. You're the first proper brain box in the family. <laughs> Wouldn't say brain box. Not with how cheap the drinks are there. Well, we're both very proud of you. Thanks, Uncle Joe. Mum was just saying the other day that maybe it's time we paid a visit to you. Didn't you, Mum? Well, we don't need to jump that fence just yet. Well, you'd be welcome. Always, of course. Always. As I said, um, I'll see. I've got a lot on at the moment. Maybe you could pop by soon, just after you're busy. And I'm off. You know, I want to leave, so I can always drive, Mum. Yes, and I could do some cakes and do some sandwiches. And <laughs> I said no!
I mean, not yet. I'm just not ready. Mom, please. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't. No, Uncle Joe, it's not your fault. You've got to stop with this. It's not the Dark Ages anymore. John, please. Let's go. I'll see you again soon. Maybe in a few months, perhaps. I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. No, it's okay. No, it's not. She's just been selfish, and it annoys me. Don't speak about your mother like that to our kid. She just tried to uh, understand it all still. It does annoy me, though. It's been over 40 years. That's long enough for anyone to accept. The world's moved on, and yet she can't seem to. We give it this letter from us both. From your Uncle Tom and me, I mean. And one there for you too, for your birthday in a few weeks. We didn't know what to get you, so we just put some money in for you. Can't have money off you. You can't afford it. Ha 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 It'll be for your studies. Or in your case, drinking studies. Well, I'm paying for the teeth. Oh, no you're not. Yeah, just watch me. It's my treat. No good take your mother to get her things. Happy birthday, Uncle Joe. Tell Uncle Tom hello from me. Well, from us. I will. Now get off you, young scallywag. Go and do your young things. I will talk to her, though. I promise. Bye, uh, John. And thanks. Happy birthday to me. Good lad. Now, take these brushes. Go ask old Mr. Gibson if you can wash them through so we can reuse them tomorrow. Sure thing, Pop. Mr. Joe, uh, how's the new paint job looking? Uh, it's looking good, Mr. Gibson, sir. Um, pa wants to know if I can rinse off these brushes in here. Yeah, of course. Uh, park yourself over there and you just get on with it. Okay, thanks.
Good morning. And you're a fine one, young Tommy lad. What's this I hear about you just selling your stock at my customers? You're supposed to hand them over personally. Honestly, what am I going to do with you? The handmade leather belts, not sudden rags. Our customers want quality items delivered. Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Gibson, but time seems always to be against me, so I have to. It's all the back of my hand in a minute. Anyway, I want it all to stop. I don't pay you to sprint around on that bike, I need the target. Here, here's your next batch to take with you. And no more fun and games or I'll hang you out to dry by your ears. Sure thing, Mr. Gibson. in my side, that one. Sorry, Mr. Gibson? Young Tom there. Oh, I suppose I shouldn't grumble. At least he turned up for work. Seems like a nice person. Yeah, I suppose. Anyway, uh, did you get your brushes done? Uh, yes, thank you. I'll get them back to my partner. All right, uh, let me know if you need anything else. I'll be here. Will do, sir. Thank you. I think you missed the spot. So, hi. Hi. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you, Joe. Want to give me a hand a sec with these belts? Um, sure. Well, can't say I've seen you around here before. Just moved up from down south. Bit bad down there for past business, so... Moved us here. Makes sense. You miss it. Didn't really do much. You not go out? With mates? Didn't have any. You didn't have any mates? How'd you make sure that happened? I, I like reading a lot. It has a natural ability to repel those of the same age, I find. Maybe I like reading too. Really? So, what do you like doing? Well, I like drawing. Painting. Not the type you're doing, mind. You know, sketching stuff. Wow. Well, what kind of stuff have you drawn? Well, maybe that's something you'll have to find out. What do you mean? <laughs> right. There. All done. Not so bad, was it? Uh, I didn't complain. <laughs> I'm playing you up. You're too easy to wind up, you know. So I take it you don't know a lot of people around here, then? Not really. Keep myself to myself. Help out my pa whenever I can. You, uh... You want to see something cool? What? Meet me. Later at five. Down by the canal. Just past the embankment, yeah? You got a bike? Y you want me to meet you? You could be anyone. Some nutter who wants to chop me up. Well, you'll never know unless you take a chance, right? Go! You done yet, lad? Pack it up. Doing them now, Pa. I'll meet you later then, Joe. Remember the bike? Oh. And I'm Tom, by the way, since you didn't ask.
Go? You'll stop your daydreaming and pack this stuff up if you know what's good for you. Sorry, Pa. Excuse me. Excuse me, mister. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was... I was decades away. Sorry, your phone's been beeping. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I'd never even heard it either. Oh. Ah. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Thanks. Just too much coal for these old bones to handle. You should get an MOT. Yes, I will. You sure you don't want to hang around? In case you need an ambulance or anything. I'll be fine. I promise. Thank you for being so sweet. You brought the bike? Yeah, of course I did. Well, you must trust me then. for living and this is most certainly that when fresh air is running through your lungs on a beautiful day i know but be careful oh come on i'm fine what could possibly go wrong ah shit oh shit are you okay <sighs> oh, yeah i'm all right is anything broken <laughs> Can you stand up? Mm, I think I've just added to the many other battle wounds I've received over the years. Let me look. It's all right. Let me look. It's fine. Please. <laughs> Sorry. You'll live. Hope so. Still got to get up that hill. What? I promised. I always keep them when I've made them.
It's beautiful. I never knew the town could look so nice. Told you it were worth it. How how is it now? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry. Thanks. Well, why do you come up here? Well, sometimes I come up here and sketch. But mostly, I think I just like the quiet. I, I thought that would be a bad thing. Not really. You like being on your own, though? Hmm. I guess so. Not always mine. But sitting here, you see it all. And everything suddenly, somehow, finds its place. Its meaning. And you don't have to worry about your worries, too, here. You? you can temporarily evict them. How'd you do that? By using your imagination. You see, what you do is you imagine you can scoop all your worries out your head, like so, and you put them in your hands, and then when you're ready, you just throw them away. See? Hey, now you try. Um, um... Go on. I, I, I feel silly. No, you look fine, honest. Go on. How you feel? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Just keep trying. It works, honest. You have to keep trying. Hey, that all look like idiots together. <laughs> I'm sorry. I knew things wouldn't go swimmingly. I thought just this once, maybe. I'll make you another tea. She didn't even mention your name. It's OK. It's not okay, Tom. She's my sister. And she couldn't even be bothered to... I'm sorry. I shouldn't shout at you. It's not your fault. You can shout at me as much as you like, if it helps. It was part of the original job description with you.
I just want you safe and happy. Better not be any sugars in these two young men. Nice cup of tea. What were you looking at? What do you mean? <laughs> but I saw you. Figured it must have been something that reminded you of Uncle Joe. It's a picture of the two of us when we were younger. With our father, your grandfather, Marty. Good morning. Good morning. I was on my way to the countryside to catch a Wow, well, Mum. I know you got this. It's nice to see you both when you were younger. In better times. John, don't start. Today's already been enough of a strain on me as it is. You think it's not been one on Uncle Joe, too? Mum, he looked heartbroken. Again. I don't expect you to understand. Why? Because I don't come from a time when, when being gay was something to fear. You know, to be scared of. The stigma. For no reason at all, I might add. John, I can't help the way I was brought up. The way your grandfather brought me up. Things were different back then. Now the world's more rampant and flexible. Back when we were kids, you fitted in, conformed. It wasn't a choice. Neither was the one Uncle Joe had to deal with. Mum, you're going to have to start catching up with the world. Otherwise you're going to get more and more left behind. So I don't have a choice? I didn't mean it like that. Look, you watch Graham Norton and Alan Carr on the box, right? Mm -hmm. And I've seen you laugh at them. Mum. You know full well that they are both gay men on your telly. That's different, son. Why? Because they're not your family. They're not your responsibility. Mum, that one last link back to your past, who's only ever wanted to have a relationship with you, he's no different to them. I just don't like to think about the intimacy thing. Then <laughs> don't ask. Not sure Uncle Joe would want to part details with you on that aspect of his life. Mum, you've got to try and at least talk to him. Please. For one day when it's too late to remedy all this. I don't ever want to see you living with that, Mum. John, just leave me alone, please. That's your loss.
Every minute more you ignore him. It's a minute less you'll have to spend with him. Rain. So, what gives then? What do you mean? Well, we've been here for a few years now. Yeah. You hardly ever went out at the best of times back down south, and now it's a rarity we see you. Well, I guess I've finally come out of my shell. Well, with a bit of help from that bleeding Tommy you're always on about. How about we meet him? I'm starting to think he's made up. Probably is, knowing you with all your books and fantasy characters. No, he isn't. Good. We can have him round then. I, I, I don't know. Uh, he's pretty shy. Shy? Well, he's brought you out your shadow, make no mistake. And anyone who can do that is not shy, if you pardon my words. Still, I don't know, Eth. Well, here's another idea. I'm off up the social with Mavis from work next weekend. I'll let you both come along. Sure. I'll ask him. That should be fine. Right. I'm off. Oh, get off we uh Hey! You drag him kicking and screaming if you have to. You hear? Concert inside, then, eh? Hang on. Just let me get this last part done. What are you drawing? Just something for my own little collection of work. Not me, surely. Maybe I am. You need better looking models. Maybe I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Artists don't like to show and tell. Oh, come on, please. 
please. No. Please. Please. Sure. Please, 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 please. 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 You never told me you were so good at this. It's just a sketch. Can't really afford a camera, so I'll take a picture of you instead. Just so I have an image of you here. Just for me. Thank you. No. Thank you. You've changed my life, Joe. For the better, I hope. For sure. And here's hoping the rest of the world follows along too. Where did you get this? Bunch of guys at Gibson's workshop had it. Passing it around. Making the usual cheap gags, you know. Oh, um, Ethel wants us to go to the social on Saturday. What for? Well, I think she's intrigued by you. Really? You can't deny, you've had an effect on me. How can they not notice that despite a few finer details being left out? And it has been just over a year. You keep putting it off. So she just wants to say hi? Yeah. Nothing too fancy. She's always been overprotective of me, I guess. And I think she just wants to meet the person who's had such a positive effect on me. Okay. Does it mean I can sing? I suppose so. in my acclaimed dance routines then, aren't they? <laughs> <sighs> A man of many talents, aren't you? Mm, you better <laughs> believe it. I think you have that up, just to remind my body it's had better days. No camera, remember? It's over 40 years old, are you know. Yeah. It's still my best work. How's it going? Hmm, not sure. What's the deadline? Date the council on it? Not till August, which is great. Because I have the time, just not the inspiration. What's the theme? It's supposed to be something to look back on for their annual local reflections festival. Yeah, I'm surprised you're doing this for the council. You've never let anyone see it, your original work on a gallery exhibit. Not that I'm particularly complaining, since most of it is of my grotesque form. 
Heaven forbid I'm inflicted on an exhibit wall. Nay, the paying public. And why not? To me, you are perfection. Blech. Not as I would, though. I don't know. The ones of you. They've always been just for me. No one else. My own private exclusives. Well, you have my permission. For what? If you ever change your mind one day. You have my permission to show them. But I thought you were kind of shy. Well, the thing is, you're brilliant at this. You've got fans all over the world who love your work. And I feel mortified if I was stopping them from seeing your complete talents. As long as you would still be my number one fan. You just try and stop me from getting a front row seat. Now, how about we get you out and have a good walk round and see if any of that inspiration comes back to you. Haven't you got your appointment at the doctor's then? Oh, that's not until later this afternoon. We've got plenty of time. Now, come on. It'll do us good to get some air, especially now springtime's upon us. I suppose you're right. I can get my walking shoes then. You old ones had better keep up. Huh. There's only two years difference between us, you know. As you keep reminding me. some brushes over with my towels. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll sort it. I remember. You've got your resource appointment later today. It's sorted then. You'll see. I told you I'd do that. Are you sure everything is okay? Yeah, fine. Tickety boo and half. Well, I don't know. That's the problem. You haven't even said why you're going to the GP later. Oh, it's nothing. Annual MOT, as you do. Must fully retired a lot. Need it more than you part timers. Don't you know? I almost forgot just how beautiful this place was. Especially when it's quiet. Hmm. Do you think it'll always be like this? You and me, watching the world go by? I resigned myself to nothing but that a long time ago. Really? Hmm. Well, nearly two years with you now. How would you expect me to imagine life any other way? Sorry. Well, you're stuck with me, sunshine. <laughs> Can you imagine us in our old age? What? 
with your thinning air and my continued startling good looks. Uh, Aye. Shut <laughs> up. No, but seriously, can you imagine it? Us, years from now. What do you think we'll be doing? I don't know. I guess we'll have his own place. A quaint little house of our own. There'll be a studio for me to work in. And you'll have decorated the whole house in light colours. Warm all over. Mm. And in the kitchen, oh, in the kitchen, there would have to be a little table with a pot of tea on it every afternoon. That is a must. <laughs> Very English of us. A duty. That sounds nice. Of course it would be. It'd be ours, that's why. <laughs> hmm. It would be difficult. I'm sure. The world is changing for the better. No. But it's not exactly screaming out for gay rights yet, is it? Mm. It's just taking time to mature. And we just have to let it. Do you think it will change much? Well... Technically... Even though we're together, we have no rights. We'll never be seen as a proper couple, recognized by law. Maybe so. But we still have the exact same feelings as anybody else who is proper. And that's always worth holding on to. They're too important for me to lose. Like I said before, you're stuck with me. <laughs> Same here. But I do hope the future is a better place. A more accepting one, at least. And that it's treating our older selves better. Well, whatever life throws at us, no one's going to stop me from looking after you. Not even when we're both dotty and too old to fend for ourselves. <laughs> Through thick and thin, I say. And sickness too, if we have to cross that bridge. Well, let's hope that it never comes to that. Joe, Joe, come on through. Please have a seat. Hi, Doctor, how are you? Good, how are you feeling? Oh, like anyone my age, a bit more tired, a bit more slower on my feet. The mind is still in fine form. And how's Tom? Fine, fine, all fine. He moans a lot, but then that's never been a worry. It's a good result. I'm afraid it's not good news, Joe. How do you mean? The MRI results came back. They show a growth on your lower spine. Yes, it's, um, 
Can I be treated? If we caught this a year ago, eight months even, we could have started a course of aggressive treatment. Chemotherapy that works. As things stand, the most we could hope for is to keep you comfortable. If it is cancer, how long have I got? <sighs> Three, four months, early August at best. Would you like me to call Tom? Yes, sir. I mean, no. It's okay. I'm really sorry, Joe. You're going to need to tell your partner about this. The procedure is quite invasive. You are going to need some home rest. Thanks, Doctor. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, 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 Tom was showing me some of his new art. Ethel, this is Tom. Very pleased to meet you, Ethel. Finally. I'm glad you've said that too. I was beginning to wonder whether you actually existed. It's been, what, two years since my brother first mentioned you? Happy to be seen then. Shall we go in? <laughs> Lead away. <laughs> each other a while now. He's brought the best out in our Joe. I'm grateful for that. So, a man of many talents. I wonder what other miracles he could perform. <laughs> I have no idea. I've literally just met him. All I know more is, he's an artist. He sketches things, <laughs> I believe. Really? He could sketch me any time he liked. <laughs> Maybe. Should you have a husband? Yeah. What all saying in your case? Go on, go and find your fella. Tell Tom I say hello. <laughs> Actually, have you seen them? Um, 
They went out the back, I think, towards the garden. Alright, I'll find them. See you soon. See ya. Joe? Tom? You out here? Joe? Already? Yes, all ready to go. Sorry, we uh, got chatting out the back and lost track of time. But it's all right, really. I'm sure, you okay? Yes, I think I might have just had a bit too much. Well, we'll walk you home. Oh, kill me otherwise. <laughs> You know, I might give him a demonstration of my unique dance skills. Or lessons on how best to make an arse of yourself. Mm hmm Well, I gotta go this way. Well, been a lovely evening. Make no mistake. Yes, it was enlightening. We'll have to do it again sometime. Right, Ethel? Joe, I think she needs her bed and some sleep. I'll leave you both be. You sure? You're going to be OK getting home? Always. You know, it was very nice to meet you, Ethel. I look forward to meeting you again. See you tomorrow, Joe. Will do. And be careful. Yeah. Are you okay? Yes, fine. Shall we? Night then.
You pair were in late again. Sorry, Pa. So what are you doing today then? <laughs> Little as possible, I imagine. Not into you too, Pa. Enough of your cheek, young man. You okay, Jack? Yeah. I'm off to see Tommy today. Oh. See. Tom, again? New pair attached to the hip or something? We're just good friends, Pa. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, just good friends, Pa. <laughs> good morning and welcome to the news. Plans to further so called controversial gay pride events in London later this year will now be going ahead after government bodies passed a motion to allow them. This despite continued protest by anti-gay campaigners in the last few weeks. Vile people. They should be shot or put down. Maybe they're fighting for equality. You know, something we all should have. <laughs> it's not natural, lad. It's a good job we know no one like that round here. Or they'd have hell to pay. You mock my words. Brave new world, Pa. <laughs> as long as they keep their filthy mitts off you and the rest of us, I won't object. It might be a brave new world, but I don't have to agree with it. Joe, wait. You okay? You're a bit worse for wearing. Joe, and... please. Is everything all right? You. You are. What? What am I? I saw you last night. You and Tom were. You were kissing one another. You are not normal. I am. I'm not different. I'm still no, me. No. Don't come near me. I can't handle you. I can't handle you touching me. I can't handle you. Please don't push me away. You're my sister. I love you. You pushed me away the moment you became a dirty pervert. <laughs> I'm not. I'm Joe, don't deny it. I saw you. You're gay. And so is Tom.
Ale... Hello, can I help? Is this one of those funny calls? Look, I don't need this at the moment. I'm very busy. Tom? Bethel? Bethel, is that you? I, I was just calling to see if Joe's there, Tom. I'm afraid he isn't in at the moment. He should be back soon. He, he just popped to the doctor's. Is he OK? As far as I know. I'm waiting for him to come back so he can tell me. Is everything OK at your end? Is it John? Has something happened to either of you? We're fine, thank you. Uh, I'll call again later. Goodbye. How are you feeling? Numb. End of an era. Or the start of a new one. I suppose you're right. You'll never accept this. Me. Us. Neither will. I saw the hatred in their faces. They were mortified. Disgusted. they're right. No. They're not. Not now, not ever. You are the most kindest and caring person I have ever known. And I am so lucky to have met you. Yeah? You are going to be right here for the rest of my life and I will be there with you. You have my word. Remember, you are my sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Even if there is none. <laughs> the irony. Yeah, that's my joke. I can only go back for my stuff. Unless. Pa's already thrown it out into the street. Well, then we'll go together. And we'll sort our lives out in the process. Me and you. Together, like we should be. And we'll sort out jobs, we'll do anything. And we'll get that little house, yeah? The beautiful garden. We'll grow old together and moan when someone doesn't do the washing up. I've got everything to look forward to, Joe. But... I'm gonna miss them. <laughs> I'm gonna...
never miss them with you. I told you we're, we're in this together. What affects you affects me. And this me on. Nothing is more important. I haven't been here for a while, Pa. Been busy and such. And I still never know if this is what you'd have wanted. Me being here to visit. Plays on my mind more than you'll ever know. Or maybe you do. I know this isn't the design you had for your son's life. can't lie and said it was mine too originally. It just happened. Maybe I'm clearing my conscience. A part of me says there's nothing to it. A piece I'll have to prove. But you'll always be my part. Despite not having seen you after that day, I just thought you'd give me a sign. Maybe I didn't do you too bad. I still love and respect you. In light of today's news. Uncle Joe! What are you doing here, John? I was out on some errands for my mum when I saw you. Did you want to lift back? Hey, what's up, Uncle Joe? Hey! Hey! Oh, God, we can't be having you like this now. In about an hour. Then. 
Oh, I'm so happy you are home. I was worried sick. I kept calling him home, but you weren't answering. Okay, what is wrong? Please, you're scaring me, Joe. I promise I'll tell you very soon. I'm just waiting for one last piece of the jigsaw. I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. Would you be a dear and go and answer the door? What's all this about, Tom? I tried to get something from John, but... I told you, Mum, I don't know what he's doing. I have no idea, Ethel. It's a mystery to me. Um, won't you come in? John, please sit down. I didn't mean for all this drama. Cloak and daggers. I didn't want to do this alone. But you aren't alone. I'm here. Begging your pardon though, Tom, my sweet. I meant I would have felt alone if you weren't all here. In this instance, I needed you all in the same room. So, Joe, why are we here? Before I tell you what I have to, there's some things I want to say. I don't want any more fighting. I've had more than enough to last me a lifetime. I'm tired of acting like it's all been okay. And that I've coped. And in reality, it's been anything but. Ethel, Effie, I never blamed you for what happened in the past. I never held your beliefs against you either. You have your ideals and that's fine. Parted too. And Tom, I love so very proud of you. And whatever your reaction is to what I'm about to tell you, I want you to promise me that you'll always carry on with your painting and you will complete the commission for the council's gallery. It's important to you. So it's important to me. But, no buts. You will complete it. Promise me? Please? I promise.
As Tom knows, I had to visit my GP today. I'd had some blood tests earlier. And tell you, I went to see what they were telling us. I'm afraid it wasn't good. What did they say? cancer. Started my lower spine and spread before we knew anything was seriously wrong. It wasn't detectable till now and it's too late to fix me. I'm afraid I don't have long left. Three or four months if I'm lucky. It'll be okay. I'll look after you. I promise. Ethie and John got away. You haven't called her in that way in a long time. They don't go. They get off okay. Yeah. I wanted to give you some time alone together. It's been a lot to take in from all directions today. Oh, Tom. I'm fine. Stop being so bloody stubborn. Some things never change, eh? I always have to have the last word. What you like. not to be that person this time. This is where you absolutely must be. Just this once. I can't do this though, Joe. How am I supposed to carry on? All my life has been with you. No one else. I don't even think I could walk to the shop on the corner knowing you won't be here when I get back. Usually with the wrong milk. She called earlier. Ethel. It must have been before you asked John to bring her. What did she say? Nothing more. Well, she asked for you. It took a lot for her to pick up that phone, I think. It made it even worse when it was me who picked it up and not you. Thanks, Pa. What? 
just something I needed an answer to. I think I just got it. I don't understand. Why don't you just tell me? It answered a question I asked. One day at a time. One day at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests, good evening. I'm I'm very grateful to be here tonight and to have been asked to produce a piece of work for the festival that evokes the theme of looking back. And for a while, I struggled. I couldn't really grasp anything that captured my imagination. Like things have at previous events and with my previous works. And then recently, I, I received some news. News that was incredibly hard to digest and that has affected me on a very personal level. More so than anything ever has in my life up to now. And while I have been having to process and prepare for an even worse day to come, it made me look back on parts of my own life and the intertwined life of someone very dear to me who came along for the ride. And then it came to me. I realized I had looked to the past each day in my studio to one specific picture on our walls. It was one of my first pieces of art that holds a truly unique place in my heart. And I've never thought of showing it publicly before, 
because it has always been such a private piece for me. It was from a moment in my life when I finally knew where I was going and who would be with me along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your continued support. And may I close in saying, it took something in the present to make me look back and appreciate life even more. And those within it that I hold very dear. And for that reason, and to celebrate this event as best I can, I present my Joe. Joe, okay. Joe's fine, Tom. John's looking after him. Oh, thank goodness, I, I thought... I actually came to see you, to have a private word. What can I do for you? I... I... This is hard for me. Ethel. I'm not really in the right frame of mind to get into any of this with you at the moment. I'll put on a happy face for Joe, but after... After what will happen? Honestly, you'll not see me again. Is that what you think I want? Do you think I would leave you to, to deal with all this? Your grief? Alone. I'm not sure I know what you want of me. Of Joe. It's been many years, and I'm just tired now. I can understand your reasons for distance. Things were very different back then. Ethel? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because tonight and every day since he told us about his condition, I've done nothing but wish I could have the time back again to get to know you better. Because I can see it all now. I can see how happy you've made my little brother. I can see it in the days gone by, and I can see it now. It's never faltered. And I'd give it anything to take it all back and to understand instead of trying to forget that the two of you ever even existed. 
I hope one day you'll be able to forgive me. As does Joe. I think you underestimate your brother. There isn't a day that goes by when he doesn't mention you and your father. He's never stopped loving you, and neither have I. You don't know how much that means to me. Tom, I promise, you will never be on your own. Not now, not ever, because I came here to say something, something I should have said a long time ago. Tom, you are my family too. Are you okay? Do you, do you need any water? The hell? The hell? What do you mean, my darling? The hell. Our hell. Go there, my lord. Don't be afraid.
jump with you someday. Oh, fine, sunshine. <laughs> What time does the meteor shower start? Any time now, they said on the wireless. So, where is Venus then? Over there. The brightest star in the sky. So, that light is millions of years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know if, say, a meteor was heading to Earth and it was going to wipe us out and all we had was a day left, what would you do with it? Well, I'd want to spend it with you, wouldn't I? But what if I wasn't there? With you, I mean. Then... It'd be probably the saddest day of my life. Hey, Luke. It's just about starting. 